Hello everybody and welcome to Organion's Puzzle Box. Uh, in today's video, I want to announce my uh, VDB collection of clouds. Uh, you will be able to get this pack from the description below. Um, it's a pretty much a drag and drop type solution where you can bring in uh, various VDB clouds in your projects and use them straight away, uh, especially if you have a bit of knowledge of how to use VDBs in your uh, program software of choice, this will be a breeze. But I do have tutorials, which I will link in the description below that shows you exactly how to set these up in uh, Unreal Engine, for example. So these clouds are usable in Maya, 3ds Max, Unreal Engine, Blender, anything that supports open VDB, the open VDB form Format and generally most applications nowadays do uh, so also people who go in the description below will be able to find a link to three of these clouds for free so you can have three of these clouds without any anything any you don't have to pay for anything obviously they're available on patreon all of them all the clouds 25 uh, there's a 25 pack cloud they're all available on patreon or you can have a look on our station or gum road uh, well, the, where, where they'll be up for sale, and if you use the discount code MyCloud23, you will be able to get 50% off on the pack anyway. So you'll be able to get these 25 clouds at 50% off if you use the uh, discount code. So what I want to show you is just uh, how to quickly set up the cloud system in Unreal Engine. Uh, you know, just to, how to use these, how to import them, and use them very, very quickly. And then we'll do the same thing in Blender. Just just so you have a clear understanding of how to set up something like the, what you're seeing behind me. So this cloud here, you're able to, to use that in Unreal Engine or in Blender quite easily, as long as uh, you know the necessary basic steps to run it. Uh, and that should be fine. So yeah, these 25 clouds, they're quite, um, they can be very intensive on your resources if you use too many of them. So I wouldn't use them for real time, but for anything, when it comes to, you know, setting up scenes, you'll, you'll do just fine. The intro videos that you saw, those were using these clouds and I've packed them together in a couple of, I don't know, maybe two hours or something like that. So I, I didn't quite put a lot of time into that. I just wanted to showcase the clouds themselves. Um, so what you'll be able to find in here are some various, uh, you know, just just quite a few variations of clouds. You'll have some cumulus, cumulus, I always say that wrong. Uh, clouds, Cyrus clouds, you're going to have like a hurricane cloud, so a massive one that just sort of you're able to rotate, which is quite cool. Uh, so I'm sure you'll be able to use these in, in your software and, you know, just get some really impressive scenes. So let's have a look quickly how to set them up. And if you're interested, just consider having a look in the description below. If you want to use um, OpenVDB in the Unreal Engine, then you will need the sparse volumetric um, plugin for Unreal Engine, which is uh, developed by a user, a well, uh, somebody that works for Eidos Montreal. So uh, you can just search on Google for Unreal VDB and you'll be able to find this link. Uh, installation of this plugin is very straightforward. You will find the installation um, steps in here. And I also have a video that shows you how to do that. But once you have your VDB plugin um, enabled, you need to go, uh, well, sorry, not enabled, but add it to Unreal Engine. You need to go into your plugins for that project and search for sparse volumetrics and you should be able to take it on and then restart the project. Once that is done, you will be able to bring in uh, volumetric clouds in your scene. So I've got um, a folder over here with some clouds. I'm just going to drag this over into, into here, but you notice that this does not work. So you cannot just drag and drop it. You need to bring it in the content folder first. I'm just going to drag it in there and an import option will show up. And it will ask me, you know, just what I want to import. And for clouds, we only have density to import. And it also asks me the quantization type. And I will set this to none for now. But normally, if you want better performance, you can select the higher FP4 or FP8, which will decrease the look of your cloud, but it will be more performant. So I can press import, and then that brought in the cloud. And now I can drag and drop it in the scene. And what you'll notice is not very visible, and it's also very small. So I'm going to increase the size of the cloud to, let's say, about 50. And you'll notice that there is something there, but not very visible. Uh, what I need to do now is increase my uh, density. So I put my density multiplier to 500, and you can see the cloud over there like that. Um, and now I can play around with some settings. Like, for example, I can 
uh, increase the ambient number or the albedo to make it more visible uh, but also over here in terms of the attributes you want to set up the local step size to one and you also want to set up the shadow step size to one tick in trilinear sampling for better for a better look uh, push jittering to one again to get a better looking cloud and also improve skylight now you need to have a skylight in the scene for this to work but once you do you'll be able to take that on and you'll see the effects now our cloud is quite uh, dark and even though we have a directional light that's shining at an intensity of 10 and this is generally because of the you know it's a post-process problem so the post-process that I've got on right now um, just pretty much makes the scene be very very dark to get that sort of look of this scene but if you untick it you'll be able to see the cloud in all of its, all of its glory um, now this cloud is reactive to light so what also a directional light so what you're noticing is that you know it can change uh, it will change its color its shadowing based on where the sun is and if we increase the density you can see that it actually blocks the sun as well if you make it uh, denser now one thing in here to note is that if you increase your albedo to maybe like a 0 0.9 or even a 0 0.99 you'll be able to get uh, more shadow and then you can play around with the ambient a bit to give it more of a cloud look it really depends on where the sun is so this kind of makes sense right now in terms of lighting but this is where you need to approach it with uh, you know with your own sort of settings and make sure that it's um it follows whatever look you're you're trying to go for um so as you can see if we if we um increase the you know decrease the albedo but we have a lot of ambient then we'll get you know we'll get a different sort of looking cloud now one thing also to to take note here um is that the you, know, you can you can pretty much go in and create you know uh, turn on light shafts for the sun and you will be able to see that which is really cool so if i do you know very um i'm just trying to do um let me just try maybe a 50 or something yeah you'll be able to see the the sort of the light shaft as the as the sun sort of moves around obviously i've got a very, bit of a low resolution um um what do you call it well you know a low resolution um fortunately a lower resolution light shaft so let me just try uh something like that i don't know it's it's still very you know you need to be able to play around with this quite a bit in order to get a good good shape um a good shape uh light shaft so let's see how that sort of looks like and you'll you'll know you you you, know, you probably i don't know if youtube allows this but you know you'll be able to notice the uh, light shaft as the light sort of passes through um the cloud that's pretty cool and that's how you set it up in unreal engine and then from there you just build upon it you know you can obviously multiply this bring in another density make a smaller bigger combine them and all sorts of things you know these clouds can can be really cool once you start putting them together into mold you know into bigger shapes um so yeah let's have a look in how this works in another dcc as well now if we want to use this in blender we don't need any plugins or any add-ons or anything like that blender already comes with an open vdb importer so let's just delete well we'll delete these into the scene over here well, we do have our camera let's make sure that we're actually using cycles instead of ev and i'm going to push push this to gpu now i'm going to shift a and then go to volume and import open vdb which will allow me to now go to uh, you know to a folder where i can um i can find the open vdb so let's just bring this one so now i've got it up here you can see it already and it's looking quite okay uh, let's switch over to render view and we're not really able to, to see anything right now i mean obviously we can see it but it's very dark uh, one thing that you want to do is over here with the you've got the object data information you've got things like step size so you are able to actually you know you can you can increase the density of this as well but you've also got a step size so the smaller that is the better the quality you'll be getting but also obviously the render will take longer um, one thing you want to do is also add a light in the scene so let's add the sun uh, let's make it you know shine from that direction and what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly make the world um, 
you know the world itself i'm going to make it quite dark we're going to go in shader editor for the world disconnect this so now my world is pretty dark um but then i want my cloud also needs a material so if we click the, the cloud you'll notice there's no material we can press new and automatically blender already adds a principal volume to that and then you're able to obviously um color the, the cloud however you want i wouldn't use an emissive because an emissive will just ensure that even the shadows are um you know basically casting some form of uh, you know some form of uh, light um so we've got a color attribute there we're using uh, sorry we, we've got a we've got a color there we're using um white and if we increase the density in here it will also increase the density of the cloud which is quite nice um but what we need to do now is have a look at how we can get a you know actually a lighter tone to this to make it look more like a cloud than than you know this sort of dust that it's looking like now so now very quickly uh we have our cloud selected we can do the step size you know 0 0.1 or whatever but if you do like a one you'll get very good performance but in render it might not look so good when you render this out so you may want to do a smaller step size or you could leave it to zero which makes the uh, you know blender will automatically work it out what it needs to be so let's just leave it to zero for now now what we're going to do is we're going to select our sun and we can push the strength to let's say 10 or something like that just to get a bit more of a cloud sort of look and then with the cloud selected we can go over in here we can actually bump up the uh, density if we want but one neat trick that i'm going to show you right here uh, notice that we have density written in the density attribute which is pretty much sampling this density from the grid what we're going to do is we're going to bring in a color ramp over here i'm going to plug it in there now we're going to drag this slider all the way to the back here which make the, makes the cloud a lot lighter but let's say we want uh, the shadows to be more extreme then we can actually plug in something in the um of um of back I always forget what the fact stands for, honestly. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look for a uh, color attribute. Sorry, not a color attribute. We're going to look, look just for an attribute. And we're going to plug in the fact over here and we're going to type in density. And what you're actually noticing right now is that whatever the um, the density you know based on the density that we've got of, the, of this it will darken it or lighten it so if we you know for example if we do something like that then we can pretty much make it very light um through that and then if we select the sun and you know increase our sun to 50 then that's what we're gonna get now this is obviously an artistic sort of choice you don't really have to do this if you don't want to uh i just like to play around with settings like that in order to get you know like uh different sort of different sort of effects but if you just want to stray forward then just leave it like that you can then select color maybe create like a more of a bluish tint again this color could be done based on density as well uh if you really want to um and then another thing in here that you could uh, also do is you can go over here into the render settings uh, click on the volumes and then you have in here step render uh for the viewport and for the render and you can do a 0 0.1 for example to get very good quality on your render of this cloud and that's pretty much how you can use this in unre in uh, blender sorry um and then you can just obviously line this up with a lot more with other scenes with other clouds and and so on obviously you need a an, a, an actual scene composition in order to get the most out of these uh, type of clouds and there are other things that can be done with the principal volume you can add the volume absorption and all other you know other things to further incorporate better a better looking uh, cloud with the vdbs that i'm providing so that's really it for um, this uh, project breakdown i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you guys found something useful here please uh, consider uh, supporting the channel by getting the this cloud pack or get the free trial, the free uh, VDBs that are available for, um, and, and just try them out, see if you uh, like them. And uh, yeah, don't forget to uh, like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And I'll ho I hope to see you guys in my next tutorial. Thank you.